Hello and welcome to another session on Data Sage interview questions and answers. In today's session, we are going to discuss about one of the most commonly asked questions and one of the most important questions in Data Sage interviews, and that is about the performance tuning or the performance improvement of a Data Sage job. But before we begin, and as always, if you like this video and the other videos on our YouTube channel, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So this is the question, how can you improve the performance of a long running data set job? So now we're going to discuss some tips about how we can improve the performance of our data set job. And our source might be database tables or we might be reading some sequential files. So we're going to discuss some general tips and these are the tips that you can mention in your answer when you are being asked this question. So tip number one, and this is very important, your job design. Your job design should be modular. What this means is Data Sage is an ETL tool. ETL is extract, transform, and load. So you might be using your Data Sage tool as an ETL tool for a data warehousing project, or probably you're just working on some data migration projects, or probably you're just applying some transformation rules on your source data. Whatever is the requirement and whatever logic you are implementing, you can always try to split your jobs into extract, transform, and load. So your extract job would be the one that would be reading the data from your source system, and it would be putting it into some staging area. And that staging area could be a data set, it could be a temporary table in, the, in your database, or it could be a table, it could be a staging table in your database. The second job should ideally be reading from this data set or your staging table and applying all the rules as per the business requirements. All the transformations and derivations and calculations, aggregations would be done in this job, all the lookups and joins, and producing an output data set which is load ready. So you apply all your rules in this job and produce an output data set. The third job is ideally a load job. And this load job would be reading from your output data set produced in the transformation job and just loading it to your target system. It could be a database system, which is your target. It could be a sequential file that you are writing to. So whatever is your target system, it would be just loading the already prepared files from the transformation stage into your target system. So this is ideally and on a high level how you should split your jobs. And what is the advantage of doing this? Now when you have a separate extract job, if anything fails while reading the data, so any error occurs while reading the data from your source system, and by any chance a data sage job aborts, then you can just go and fix that job. Let's say the error occurs in the transformation stage. So if you had just a single job, then you would have to run the whole job again just to correct that error which occurred in the transformation job. Now when you have separate jobs, you have already read the data from the source system and it is already in the extract data stage, data set or staging table. So that one part has been completed. So you do not need to repeat that part and that would save you a lot of time. And similarly, when you just have the output step, so probably there is some, there is not even some technical error, probably there is some uh, database timeout issue or the database server becomes unavailable for some reason. So your load step fails. Then you do not have to repeat your transformation step. You can just repeat your load step by correcting the error, whatever is our getting, uh, error in your target system, and you can just run that one particular job. So this is how it would save you time. Now your transformation itself might be very complicated, so it depends on you how you can split your transformation job and whether it is wise to split the transformation job in different steps. Also, uh, another way in which this would help is when you have too much logic in one single job, it becomes too complicated, it becomes difficult to maintain, it takes a lot of time to get compiled. If somebody browses through the job, it takes a lot of time, and the job itself also takes much longer time to process in comparison to when you have three separate jobs. So let's say no error occurs and you have all the logic in one single job and you run that job, it might actually take more time than splitting that job into three separate jobs. So this is your number one step which you should always remember, splitting the jobs at proper logical points, making a modular design 
And this design you have to keep in mind is scalable, should be scalable as well. So your logic changes, something changes, you should be able to make the changes in your same job and not need to create extra jobs or rework or do much on the same job. So it should be scalable as well. So this is your number one tip, which is modular design. Okay, moving on to the next tip is around the use of transformer stage. Now this we have already discussed in one of our previous videos in the series on data stage interview questions and answers. And we have to understand that the transformer gets compiled into C++ code. So it needs some external compiler to, uh, to produce the executable. So it is extra work for data stage and it might impact the performance. So for simpler operations, you can use the data stage native stages, uh, like the copy stage and so on. And for more, uh, for, uh, more complex transformations, you can use the transformer stage, but to try to minimize the usage of transformer stage. So obviously it is, we are not saying that you have to completely say no to transformer stage. Every job would be using transformer stage because all the derivations can be done only in the transformer stage. So just make sure that if you can combine the logic of three transformers into two transformers, or if you can combine the logic of two transformers into one transformer. So use this uh, stage optimally and try to use this stage as many stages as are optimum for the job performance. So not too many stages because you have to keep in mind that it needs an external compiler and may hit the performance of the job. Next tip. Next tip is your runtime column propagation. So this is basically to say that select only the required number of columns. So if your source system has 10 columns and in your output you are deriving or whatever uh, temporary data set you are producing, you only need four columns, then please do not propagate the, all the 10 columns. Just select the desired number of columns that you want. So in your very first stage itself, you can use you can just drop down the necessary columns and just propagate the desired number of columns. Now, runtime column propagation can be enabled at the project level. So probably your project has it enabled by default. So make sure that you, uh, that you disable it when it is not needed. So turn it off when it is not needed. Make sure that you understand the meaning of runtime column propagation and the necessity of runtime column propagation. So if you do not need those columns and your runtime column propagation is turned off, internally data stage propagates all those columns which are not needed. So if you want to improve the performance of your job, make sure that you turn off the runtime column propagation. But they might be needed as per your job requirement. So make sure you understand what you are doing and what are your requirements before taking this step. But in short and simple, the idea here is to take only the necessary number of columns and perform derivations on those columns. The next step is similar, and the next step is similar, which is filter the source data. So when we say that take only the required number of columns, it also makes sense to take only the required number of records. So if you have 100 records in your source, you do not need to take along all the 100 records, perform all the calculations, and at the end, take or apply a filter to uh, select only the required number of records. Do this as soon as possible. If you're using a database source, put your where clause in the select query. If you're reading from a file or something, put that clause in whatever is the next step, whether you're using a filter stage, you can uh, put a where condition there. If you're using a transformer stage, you can put your constraints on, on that transformer uh, stage. So take only the required number of records, take only the required number of rows. Use database power. Now this is very important and this applies for all the data stage jobs which are using any kind of database uh, database stages, whether it's sources, targets, or lookups. So here, what we need to understand is that a database has much larger power than a data stage server. So if you can do your operations in the database, they would always be faster than doing them in data stage. So make sure that you filter your data in your database stage. So you apply your web conditions, apply your order by clause. Your order by is always going to be faster in your database. 
try to join on different tables if you can. If there's too much data, then it might be wiser to use the join stage in data stage. So depend on the volume of data. If the volume of data is too high, then a join in data stage is faster than a database, and that is because a join requires your input data to be sorted and partitioned, and that makes it makes the operation faster. But that applies only when your data is of a really large volume. If it is of manageable volume, then you can, you can do these tests yourself. You can see whether your database query is returning the results fast enough. If it is, then apply the joins in the data in your database query SQL itself. If it is not, then use the data stage join stage. Perform calculations. The calculation would also be faster if you do them in your SQL. So try to do as many calculations if you can, which are easy to write, easy to frame in the SQL. They would always be faster. If they're too complicated and require looping and other stuff, then you have to go for a transformer. But try to do shift the simpler calculations to your uh, SQL. Even if it is something like a ranking uh, operation, uh, you're ordering by and ranking, then try to do that in SQL. That is going to be faster if you can do it in your source SQL. Perform lookups using database join operation. So lookups are similar to joins. Lookups would mostly be on tables which have a limited number of records in them, so they would always be faster when you do it in a database SQL. So if you can, then try to put all those commands in your database SQL. So this is how you can uh, capitalize on your database power. Partitioning and sorting. Now, partitioning is a very technical, conceptual uh, thing in data stage, and it is very important to understand what kind of partition is works best for what kind of job and what kind of stage. So, the first aim of partition, if there is not if we meet the basic requirements, that is, we need to have a hash partition for uh, join. That is always true. So if you do not need any kind of particular partition, then uh, you have to focus on balancing partition data. Because if your data is partitioned across, uh, if your data is balanced across partitions, then all the partitions would take almost the same amount of time to process, and your total time taken by the data stage job would be optimum. But if your data is unbalanced, so one partition has one record and another partition has 100 records, the one, the partition with the one record would finish in, let's say, one second, that's hypothetical, and the partition with 100 records would finish in, let's say, 100 seconds, then your total time taken by the job would still be 100 seconds. So we do not want that. We want the data to be equally distributed, as equally distributed as possible, so that the processing might time might improve. Avoid repartitioning. Again, very useful in cases where you're dealing with high volumes of data. Try to maintain the same partition and sort order. So try to start with the partition on the keys that are required by a lot of stages. So you need the partitioning on those keys by almost all the stages that you are working on in the data stage job. So partition on those high level keys and then try to maintain the same partition. So you do not need to partition on those keys again because the data is already partitioned there. Similarly with sorting, leverage the sort order. So try to maintain the sort order in your first step itself, whatever sorting you are doing. If you use that sorting in the later stages as well, then you can leverage on the sort order as well. Lookups and joins, we've already discussed this as well. So use lookups and joins wisely. You should know when to use lookup and when to use a join. Lookups are to be used for small reference data. Joins have to be used for large data volumes. As I mentioned earlier, uh, that joins are faster because the data is sorted and partitioned, but then that is also an extra overhead for the job. So if you are looking up, so if you are running on the reference tables, a lookup would always be faster because you can use entire partitioning for lookups. And it stores the data in your memory. Okay, now this is about the database stages. So database stages, so most of the times, actually, the issues are with uh, when you are dealing with database, when you are reading data from database tables in your data stage job. So those jobs tend to run a lot longer. 
and then you have to fine tune a lot of things and you can improve the try to improve the performance of your data sets job one of those things is your record count and array size now they have got default values so you do not need to uh, you do not need to change those values you can keep those values and they work fairly good for a lot of data so mostly you would not need to change them but if there are issues then and you cannot fix them in any other way then you have to understand the record count and array size and you can play with them and try to see what setting works best for your job when dealing with that database stage now array size is basically the number of records in a batch and record count is basically the number of records in a transaction ideally record count has to be a multiple of whatever value you give for the array size so you have to see what values work best if let's say 2000 records and you have a lot of records in your uh, database table and 2000 records are if you mention the record count is 2000 which are the number of records in a transaction and what that means is that after every 2000 records a commit a database commit would be performed so 2000 records insert 2000 records are inserted then a commit operation is performed then the next 2000 records are inserted then the next commit operation is performed so if you change this value to let's say 4000 then 4000 operations are inserted 4000 uh, records are inserted after that the commit operation would be performed so this is how the record count matters and this is what it means so if 2000 records after 2000 records commit operation is performed then and it, it is making your job slow you can try changing it to you can uh, try raising the value to any number that is suitable for your database but the the disadvantage of this is basically uh, that your commit would not be performed so if by any chance your job fails then Uh, and it only wrote the first transaction that is 4000 records and none of the records would be returned to your database table so this is what you have to talk with your database uh, architect and your data stage architect uh, or your data warehousing architect and you have to understand that what might be the impact of raising the record count but this is how the record count works and also sometimes the tables and sometimes the requirements where we do not want to commit any data because we do not we do not have a sure shot way of running the data stage job again and starting from that record uh, from that record which got failed so if 2000 records got inserted we need to start inserting from the 2000 and first record and we have not designed a data stage job in that way which is mostly the case then what we want to do is basically put the record count as zero the record count of zero means that the commit would be performed only after all the records have been inserted or updated in your target table so if that has not happened and your load job fails for any reason none of the records would be inserted or updated in your database table so again that uh, depends on your requirement but you can play with these values and try to improve the performance of your data sets job ideal design now ideal design again especially for incremental loads and stuff try to separate your insert and update operations so prepare an insert data set and and an update data set and you can perform them separately so you can insert your data whatever data set you have data records you have written in the insert data set you can insert them first and then perform the update operation or vice versa whatever works for your data sets job and while doing this you can uh, drop the indexes on the table because insert uh, operation you are performing you can uh, without checking the indexes you can drop and rebuild your indexes on the table so that approach is taken by many projects as well and if the duplicates result and the rebuild index might fail and then you have to investigate whatever is your data issue or if it is a problem with your data sage job then you can uh, correct that error and the third step is that uh, data sage has its own limitations so there are sometimes it is wiser to write that logic into unix shell scripts or through unix commands and use them as after and before uh, job routines or use sql procedures 
So sometimes it is wiser and easier and a much better approach to write that code into Unix or through SQL procedures. So you have to take that decision and you have to design your job. And you, it could be a combination. You can call Unix scripts and you can call Unix commands in your data stage jobs. You can call SQL procedures in your data stage job. So optimize your job. You don't have to perform all the logic in data stage. You can perform the logic in Unix and SQL if it is easier to do that. Okay, and reject links and page stage. So this is more with the debugging of data stage job. So add reject links. It's very important to add reject links, otherwise your job will keep on filling for one reason or the other. Just add reject links so you can collect your reject data. Also, you can analyze that data, and if there's an, any data issue, you can contact the right person who needs to correct that data issue. The second tip here is to use copy stages on your data stage jobs because with the copy stages, if for any reason you need to debug your job, you can just connect the peak stages, which are very helpful. So you don't need to go to your database again and again. Peak stage is just like a sample stage. So some sample data from that output link would be written. So you can investigate your intermediate data in your data stage job. So between stages, what is happening, you can investigate. It's a very good way of debugging. And the copy stage does not have any impact on the performance of the job. So it is a very performance uh, friendly stage. So you can use as many copy stages as you want in your data stage job. And then uh, you can just attach a peak stage and investigate uh, rather than uh, taking out the links, changing your, making a copy of your data stage job, and then taking out the links between the stages and putting a data set or something to get the data in. So you can use the peak stage and the copy stages to debug and analyze your performance. So uh, these are the tips that you can use to improve the performance of the data stage jobs. And these are the tips you can mention to your interviewer if you are asked this question. If you think there might be some other tips, please let us know in the comments below. And I would put a link to all these topics that we have discussed in some more details in some of the other videos. I would put the links of all those in the description box below. Thank you again for watching this video and please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.